I'm Dana Nye, and I'd like to welcome you. I'm standing in front of our company headquarters, where nearly all of our makeup is made. Our subject today is perfecting HD beauty with Ben Nye makeup. It's in two parts, camera ready beauty and high style glam. Debbie Muller is a renowned makeup artist from Sydney, Australia. Her recent credits include The Great Gatsby, The Wolverine, and Forbidden Ground. She created a stunning Gatsby glam for us at IMAT Sydney. You can see it by going to our webpage and clicking on At The Makeup Show Sydney 13. Well, we've got a packed house, so let's join Debbie and her model, Kelly Kathleen. Even though I powdered a little bit earlier, I'm now going to go in with the new Ben Nye Starlux foundation. It gives you, you can go from minimal to about 40% coverage, okay. Um, it'll lend itself to the HD makeup so you can apply it over the top. So if you are shooting, say, editorial and you needed that heavier coverage, that's going to create that's going to be sweat proof, water resistant, under heavy studio lighting. This would be my makeup of choice um, in terms of building makeup. So you'll see how easily it glides over the skin in a moment. Even when you have a different base underneath, it doesn't break that base or makes that base gel up in any way. Um, I like the fact that when you are in a hot room, nothing happens to it. It literally will just stay as it is from the time you've left the makeup room to on set to at the end of the day. It's pretty much a consistent longevity Jeopardy base that you, you can powder it if you so wish to if you want to mattify it, but really there's not a need. You can keep it dewy if you so wish to as well. But you can keep building. Like I'm literally not using a ton of makeup as before. And I'd use a brush with um, more spread out bristles rather than a compact bristle. Um, still synthetic, um, but something that's going to give you um, be able to reach into the pores a bit more because this time the makeup's a, bit, a little bit more dense so you don't want the makeup to just sit on top. So okay so what I'm doing now is sometimes we have to do really quick changes especially in runway and in film and we don't have time to take our talent back to the makeup room or backstage so I'm just going to show you that you know by using some Starlux and some of the Ben Nye um, adjusting concealer just to mix that into the, the actual conduct, uh, adjusting concealer into the Starlux foundation. I'm just going to rejuvenate that eye because there is a matte product on there. But I don't want to um, blend it away across the face anyway. Pretty much I just want to create a dewiness to the eye because of where I'm going, heading next with my makeup. I'm just going to vamp this makeup up and use um, complementary colours this time. We're going to use an aubergine and a yellow on the eye and we're going to use the aubergine from the Eye of Finest Stack. So we're going to use a cream on the eye. Um, and as you know from earlier, I love using creams because there's no fallout. Okay? And you can set them with any colour over the top. In Sydney we call this the new black because basically once I started using it, and no one was buying black eye definer or black gels or anything. They were just after this, and we actually sold out from our distributor. This colour, or this product, has a massive colour payoff. So you can go from quite intense to a very sheer, to like, can pretty much make your aubergine into a naked grape colour. Ha, ah, you should make a colour called naked grape. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly what I thought. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm going into the waterline of the eye and pretty much everywhere within the eye line. I'm going to go in with the black eye definer. So just that one there. And when you're blending this particular cream, always blend down rather than up. Blend towards your deeper tones, and then later on, blend the deeper towards the, the lighter. And again, with the cream, there's no fallout. It's not falling over the top into that aubergine. So therefore, you're not making as much of a mess. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my bed and I, oops. No. <laughs> this is lemon. So just to answer your question. And then that will just make that Lumiere cream pop even further. So when you're wanting to go for deeper, more theatrical applications of makeup, layering your creams and your powder on top um, works beautiful under theatrical lights. Okay, this powder is another thing that I don't leave home without. Um, do you guys all use the Benai Lumia powders? Yeah? Okay, so you can use them wet or dry. You can mix them into your foundations and it creates a nice shimmer body makeup. Um, you can use it with just moisturiser as a body makeup or you can create a nice pearlescent type foundation when you're mixing it into your foundations. Um, you can use it high in the cheek, you can mix it into your lipsticks. It has so many effects that you can, uh, it's such a versatile product. So just from the brilliant Lumiere colours, I'm just going in with the royal purple. So I'm just using the royal purple along the outer lower lash line as well, just to set the eye divider looking up. So this is just cosmic violet, just in the center. You're very good with violet and yellow. Yeah. They're very complementary colors. I mean, it's part of nature. And color theory is so important. Sometimes it's hard to choose colours when, you're, when, you, when you get told just used whatever. But always look back on nature and look at how it reflects, look at flowers and what the colour of that leaf is that a, a flower grows out of. I think a lot of things with, with any makeup artist is we don't know when to stop and put our brushes down. We want to like keep going because there's like this rush, not a rush to finish it, just a rush within yourself that it's like, oh, this is so much fun. I just want to keep adding every single colour and pretty much the whole kit. Um, <laughs> but we're not going to do that. So. Now, okay, um, I'm going to complete this makeup now. Yeah. Keep I'm going in with a blush. Okay, I'm going in with coral, not carol. In the blush. Okay, smile. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just um, adding a bit more depth to this blush. So if you had to be in a photographic environment where the room wasn't as bright and it was more muted lighting or even a combination of a lot of light, um, especially for theatre, you still want to be able to see some form of colour. I'm going to pick up from the Mojave palette. Um, I actually got to see the Mojave Desert, which was really cool. So this is where Dana got his inspiration from. Like, hey, I know that word. Okay, so I'm using the golden light and I'm going to just do a very light contour. It creates a really nice contrast. So let's say we had to shoot this in black and white. The gradation of colour would go from a really light grey to a deeper grey um, because of the saturation of the pink in the front. And even utilising these colours would be perfect for black. So if you guys have got black and white on your phones or cameras, take, it, take a photo in black and white and just see how the colours lends itself to that. This is the new Bed Nye um, lip palette. It's from the Sunset series, California Sunset actually. Yeah. Have you all seen it? So it's the LSP3, it's called California Sunset. Uh, there are six totally new colors there, and they're they're very rich. And we made a brand new um, lipstick formula for it, um, and it's um, creamy. Um, you can punch it up with a little gloss, but the colors are really rich. And you can see how, like, even though I called this grape earlier, this grape is much more vivid and much more berry-like as well. Yeah. And the texture of these lipsticks are just beautiful. And again, just layering. Like earlier, that had blush, it had a lip, lip liner, um, it had gloss. So there's nothing wrong in, in layering your products. If it works, do it. Remember, there's no rules. When you're stretching the lip, it allows you to actually see the natural lip line and it allows you to see all your little imperfections as well. But when the lips just relax, you think that it's straight until the model goes to smile and you look at the monitor and it's like, yikes. It's, yeah, it's not. Um, a really good tip that I tell my students when creating like the perfect lip is to always have your model up like this, and on profile, the lips should appear like a heart on both sides. Because usually when we're doing any editorial shoots with extreme close-ups of a lip, it always looks like a heart shape, yeah? For bridal, I know that a lot of brides don't want shine, but then the, there's the brides who want like everything. And there's nothing like a bit of cheek bling. Um, but even for when you're working on a personal grooming makeup, as a nighttime makeup, this is just beautiful. 